Hello, I'm David Holbrook. I'm the festival director of Mountain Film in Telluride. This is our Minds of Mountain Film series. It's an honor to be sitting here with Louis Sohoyos, winner of uh, the Oscar for his great documentary, The Cove. Louis, really welcome to Mountain Film, first time. Thanks, great to be here, really great to be here. Yeah, we're doing all right down here, huh? Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, I can say without a doubt, uh, it's the, the best festival I've been to. Ah. Know, for, for, you know, enthusiasm, like-minded people, uh, the kind of films I like to see, it's all concentrated right here. Well, I was so glad we were talking, you were gonna be in here for about 30 hours, and then you said, wait a sec, let's bring the whole your whole group, the Oce Oceanic Preservation Society, down. Well, why did you decide to do that? Well, it's, uh, it's for inspiration. You know, it's like it's right here. Everybody's together, and um, you know, we're we're just we're just finishing the cove in uh -huh. terms of the. Uh, not, you're never done with the doc, really, but we're starting the next movie. And I thought just get everybody together and you know get inspired by all the other people doing great things. Well, that's what we try to do here. We, we, I joke that we traffic in inspiration, and I, and I think <laughs> there's a lot of it around here. And, and your film, The Cove, has done that as much as anybody. And, and, and what I love about that film, and I say this a lot, is that I feel that here's an environmental movie with teeth and claws and, 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 a, and a fight in it that, that I don't see in that many environmental movies. Did, did you go in with that intent, or is it the subject that drew you to that, or how'd that happen? Um, no, I mean, it really came at it, in at it as a, uh, as a journalist, and then uh, about halfway through the film, I realized that we would have to you know, we'd have to become an activist really to get into the cove. And then, uh, you know, it was really like a watershed moment in my career. I feel like, uh -huh. you know, I had a really great career doing stills for National yeah. Geographic sure. and great magazines, but I feel like that was all a walk in the wilderness compared to fil compared to filmmaking. And um, yeah, I mean, that was, it, we just realized that we had to really become activists to create the film and then um, it just, Jump, jump started me and I think everybody else that worked on the film to, to, do, to try to inspire change, really. Well, that's what I look at as too, as an activist film festival here. I say, okay, what are the issues? How can we have an impact on them here at Telluride? But I, and that's why I look for films like yours and yours to me is the, is the, the, the best example of this, that here's an issue, we're gonna take on that issue and take it on aggressively in the same way that the people who are causing this issue are aggressive, right? And, and did you, is it a little fight fire with fire mentality? Yeah, well, I mean, they have a lot, of, lot more money, a lot more resources. Uh, they, they're the back pockets of the politicians. Um, I, test, I testified to Congress a couple weeks ago, and everybody on the subcommittee, this was against the, the this was, they were questioning the use of cetaceans and wow. captivity, you know, because the only way that they're able to keep them there is for uh, the educational benefit. And everybody on the, on the subcommittee, I think, was pro Pro captivity, but by uh -huh. the end of the two and a half hour, uh, you know, of the testimony, I think they were on our side. Yeah, you know that we had this multi-billion-dollar industry on the run, and I think it's just you know what we're peddling is the truth, you know, and that's what they have on their side is money, and uh, hopefully the you know the forces of good will win out. Uh, well, they don't always. That's but true, but you know, at least, at least the, the the fight is what I'm interested in, you know, uh, as well as the results. But you know, to sit back and do nothing after you know so much, it feels like you've got to use all the resources you possibly can. Think the wind's coming in a little here? <laughs> <laughs> we can harness this. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so, and that's that. The fight is what I'm so interested in. I look around this festival and I see people who are fighting all over the place. My God, well, this wind is something. Um, I think you're making people mad. That's my theory. Is that some, and I think you're stirring up spirits, which are good. These are good spirits. Let's get these <laughs> fighting wind spirits. They're on our side. Exactly. Yeah. They're, they're for us. They're just telling us they got our back, right? Is that, <laughs> is that what's happening here? <laughs> um, no, and I really, when I, when I came away from that movie, I thought, okay, here's a film that also is getting its message out. Obviously, the Oscar helps. But you've had a, a, a kind of a brilliant campaign and gain attention and getting focus on this in, in this country. Tell me what's happening in Japan. Well, the movie comes out next month in Japan. Uh, we were hoping to get four theaters, maybe tops, and we had over 26. Really? Um, you know, it's been, there's been a lot of resistance against get, uh, having the movie seen there. There's, you know, riot police have showed up five times at our distributor's office and home. Um, so we've, we've got the, we've got their, We've got their attention, which is what we want. And you know, all this publicity is really helping to you know, move the, the film forward in a way that we couldn't do, we couldn't right. afford to do. So right. they're, they're really kind of playing into our hands uh, you know, by protesting it, by making it a, 
international incident, really. Uh, so it's, it's very exciting because the you know, change, I think, is afoot. You know, once the Japanese people see this film, I think, you know, then they have the choice to decide whether they want this to go on their country. You know, I, I think it's a win for, for the environment and it's a win for, for Japanese people because these animals are toxic. Well, and that's the thing you spoke yesterday at our, what do we got, something? Uh, the tent is about to get lift off, yeah. Wow, this, this is exciting, man. Oh, Jesus, Louie. Were there kids inside there? No, but there's, uh, there's, I don't want to knock somebody out. Sorry. Oh, that was good. That was impressive, man. I, we won't forget this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I hope we got all of that. Luis <laughs> Ahoy, I was on the roll on that. That's... Exactly. We're, we're keeping this. This take is all good here. Let's cut out my squinting and add Louis <laughs> sprinting after the tech. My Goodness gracious. That's being an activist. <laughs> exactly. Let's be an activist. I just saw this, this huge tent like levitating and, over And all I saw the was the wire going. Oh. I thought it might take out, a, take out something. Because oh. I can see bricks being you know, swept up. <laughs> all right, we're back on track here, guys. Um, Taiji, what's happening in Taiji right now? Well, they just tested a lot of the town for mercury poisoning. They found out that the town is off the, off the charts for. Uh, for, for being toxic with mercury. Uh -huh. uh, they said they didn't find problems with people that were affected by sure, mercury. No mercury. That's because they did a test for it. They tested right. to, for the evidence of the poisoning, but they uh -huh. did a test for the actual effects. So it, it's a start. I mean, it's, um, you know, the, the, we have, it's, they've been able to succeed so far because the, the press hasn't been covering it in, the, in their country and people didn't know about it. Right. So now people know about it. it the movie's going to be out there and, you know, it's really the first step is to create the awareness. The change, you know, comes later on. Uh, the dolphin, the the slaughter. The slaughter is scheduled to start up September first. Um, I'm not going to go back to the country to protest uh, because there's arrest warrants out for me. I had a feeling. Uh, conspiracy to disrupt commerce, trespassing, and photographing police. Did you get to see Kyoto and Nara and all the nice sites in Japan before you became persona non grata there? Yeah, I've been to Japan quite a bit. I, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be going back in this lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell me quickly about uh, what's happening with your other actions. We found out that a, a restaurant, a very high-end, well-known sushi restaurant was selling whale meat, endangered whale. And we went in there, we had the covert cameras and um, then we took it to federal agents. And they said, well, you need a chain of custody. You need to prove that you know, it has to be you know, seen by federal agents. And they, can you come back to do it? And it's very expensive. It's called omakase, where you order the chef's choice. Right. Uh, it's over $1,000 you know, for a meal, plus you have operatives in the restaurant you know, to fly right. in. It's several thousand dollars. And they said, well, can you come back? And I was like, well, that's very expensive for us. You know, let me see. And then we got nominated for the Oscars. And literally, why, like our wives and girlfriends were going away to the mayor's office in LA to go to parties and stuff. I would sneak away to, to go with federal agents. We'd be in the back of our, you know, our van. With, Sounds uh, like a movie. It, it, we filmed it, yeah. It's, a, it's definitely gonna be a, at least a television show. So are you doing more actions like that? Yeah, we went, went, we went to Korea right after that and uh, found a restaurant that was selling Japanese whale meat illegally. Uh, we busted that one as, as well. Uh, it's, it's happening all over the world. We found a lot more restaurants actually in LA, but we weren't able to get enough evidence in time. One last question, do you still eat fish? Very little. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, more of a vegan now than I ever was in my life. I haven't eaten fish for about two months, but um, you know, I, I dabble in and out of it. Like, you know, it, it depends. If I was just in Germany and the, the next uh, sponsor of the next film was eating fish, so it was like, you know, you don't want to alienate people. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I can't eat large fish anymore. I won't eat large fish because of the Apex. toxicity. Yeah, apex predators. Stay away from the, the large, right. you know, the large fish. Yeah, definitely. So it leaves us with sardines. Uh, white pollock, small stuff. Yeah, it's a, you know every there's about six levels to the the food chain. You live, you're eating tuna. You're at the very top. Every time you go down a level, you have a, a magnitude of order. It's, it's, it's a tenth of the the, po the toxicity. So why why eat a, a fish that has a, as many of the good stuff? Sylvia Earle says we, we shouldn't even call it seafood. She won't use that word. What's she calling? Fish. fish. She she's she's adamant no fish. But Sylvia Earle feels the whole notion of seafood is is a is part of the problem. Well, the reality is there's not enough seafood, f fish in the world to right. feed the planet. Right. Uh, we, we've run out and we're just coming to grips with that. It's uh, a lot of species are commercially extinct. They're going to be a c commercially extinct. You eat that, uh, that kind of fish, you're going to be part of the problem. It's great to have you here at Mount Film. Likewise, I, man. I, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. You can come yeah. back. Love to have your team uh, down here. Luis Hoyos with the Cove. 
and who knows what kind of sort of trouble he'll be causing next. Thank you, Louis. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Cheers. Good to see you. Good to see you too.